let me just start out with that. And um, so, you know, when we did energy, I sort of eventually came out and told you guys that I can't define energy. There's no way to define it. Um, but with uh, the second quantity that uh, with the second quantity that I'm going to tell you that is conserved, uh, let me just define what momentum is so that we have something to talk about. And we'll justify soon why we define the momentum the way we actually define the momentum. So momentum is a new quantity that we are defining. And I guess with a lot of words, just like with a lot of vocabulary words in physics 4A, um, you have seen the word momentum. Maybe not in a physics context, um, but you, know, you have seen the word momentum. And so you have some sense of intuition that's tied up with your understanding of the word momentum. And I want to make sure that the way we are going to define this in physics aligns with how you naturally feel about the word momentum. Because you know, this wasn't picked out of a, you know, it, this wasn't picked out randomly. It is supposed to match with a, so where else have you seen the word momentum used? Like, when do people, like what, what? So if uh, uh, some, I don't know, I watch too, mon too many political talk shows. If uh, some talk show host talks about momentum over, uh, of a new newcomer in politics in their campaign, like what are they talking about? Popularity is increasing. Yeah, some sort of sense of change, right? They're starting from bottom and they're moving up and there's some sort of trend that you're looking at. Uh, in what other sense would you use the word momentum? Sort of everyday context. Mm, I'm not sure if there's any other. I mean, it, it is a common word, right? How many people here have heard the, mo the momentum? Can someone define it uh, for us in the sense of English dictionary? How would an English dictionary define the word momentum? Jared, how would an English dictionary define the word momentum? Okay, ability. So an object is moving, and it's going to continue moving unless something comes up and like stops it. In fact, that's sort of the sense in which people use it in politics. Like uh, some newcomer is doing well, and unless they make a gaffe or do make some mistake, they will continue to do better. So um, the way we are going to define momentum in physics carries that. Um, carries the sense uh, with it. So let me just write down the definition of momentum. So, um, uh, so let me start out with a symbol that we use for momentum. For some inexplicable reason, the symbol we use for momentum is P. I just assume that there's some German word that's, uh, that explains why it's P. It's just the symbol that everyone uses. Lowercase p, not uppercase. So momentum, lowercase p, is defined as mass times velocity. Or uh, let me keep the, so if I write it out as a momentum, then that's equal to mass times velocity. Or you know we don't make habit of writing things out like that. So in symbols, it'll be M, oops, momentum P is equal to mass times velocity. I want to um, touch on something that I should touch on now. What kind of quantities are mass and velocity? As in, when I, whenever I ask that question, it's a question of is it a vector or scalar? Is it a con quantity where I don't care about direction? Or, I'm sorry, is it a vector or scalar? scalar? If it's a vector, then I care about the direction. If it's a scalar, then I don't care about direction. So mass and velocity. Is mass, uh, what kind of quantity is it? Uh, it's a scalar. Mass doesn't have a direction. Um, what, is, what kind of quantity is velocity? It's a vector. Velocity has a direction. So what you see on the right hand side here is that this is a scalar multiplication. You are taking a vector and multiplying it by a scalar. And if you recall back to the vector algebra that we are covering last time, that means momentum should also be a vector. So when something has a momentum, 
then um, that sense of the momentum always comes with the direction. So as an example, this cart, it can have a momentum. So, um, okay, yeah, it can have a momentum. When I push it from left to right, it'll gain a rightward momentum. And then bounces and then comes back. Um, so, uh, so right now it has rightward momentum. And when it comes back, does it have the same momentum when it's coming back? Same in magnitude. Um, so you have the sense that, so however much movement this has, it's the same amount of movement this has. But, so with the kinetic energy, we didn't care. Energy was a scalar. But this is the one distinction I want to draw from the start. This is going to be a vector. So we are going to care, is it moving to right or left? So when this cart is moving to right, it has rightward momentum. When it's coming back, it has leftward momentum. Yeah. Uh, let me try to make a sense of this definition in two ways. So one is, um, so when we say this car test right where the momentum, does that description match with the, the English definition that Jared was giving? That you know, momentum means like something is moving and it'll keep on moving unless something stops it. Is that what you said kind of? Yeah, okay, so does that, uh, how we define the momentum here, does that match with the, that intuition? That, so, okay, that's mass right now. When it has zero velocity, that's zero momentum. So let me give it a little bit of push so that it has non-zero velocity. So it has rightward momentum. So I guess, um, so if there wasn't this rail here and this track went forever, would you expect this to move to the right forever? According to laws of physics, you know, yeah. If we can ignore friction, you would expect it to move forever, right? So, so yeah, so that's the one sense in which uh, the, word, the way we are using the word momentum in physics matches with the natural intuition you have for that English word. I mean, that's why we picked it. Here's the second question. So this cart weighs about 500 grams, or its mass is about 500 grams. I can add another 500 grams to it, have it uh, double the mass. So I guess this is the question. When this cart has double the mass, then according to this formula, if I gave it the same velocity as last time, then it should have double the momentum. Like, what do you think that means? That when I give it the same velocity as last time, somehow it has, oh, I'm sorry, let me do this again. When I give it the same velocity as last time, somehow it has double the momentum that it had when, you know, when it was moving with that 500 gram. Like, what does that mean, intuitively? Okay, so it doesn't really, so, um, so I've just said that, you know, force that momentum exerts will be double. Now, I do want to say force does relate closely to momentum. We are going to look at that either sometime today or very soon sometime this semester. Um, so, yeah, so it does relate to a force. And in fact, let's look at it this way. I can actually try to measure how much force it takes to try to stop this cart. Um, you know, I'm gonna use this weak spring to kind of pull on it and bring it to a stop, right? So that's how much sort of force it takes to bring it to a stop. And when I make it heavier and give it uh, the same velocity as it had uh, uh, last time, then you are going to see, yeah, it does take more amount of force to bring it to a stop. So, um, so that's why this uh, mass is here. Something could be moving at a very high speed. For example, air molecules. Do you know how fast air molecules move? Depends on the type, you know, if it's nitrogen, oxygen, or helium. Um, they move at about a speed of 300 meters per second. Then they are striking you every second right now. Do you feel that? Not really, because the air molecules have such a small mass that the momentum associated with its motion is small. So, actually, that's not technically true. You do feel it, it's just that you are used to it, air pressure, because <laughs> it does tie into air pressure, but uh, that's for physics 4B, so let me not get into that too much. So, uh, so this is the definition of momentum. 